Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I uh, hope it won't get too warm in here. The air conditioner is only set for 72. Um, this is Board of, Ta Board of Miami Township Trustees meeting for November um, 2022. Um, this is our regularly scheduled Board of Trustees meeting, and we will have uh, some business to attend to prior to the uh, public comment period that was advertised. Uh, it, it won't take long. I'm real good at making things brief. Uh, and speaking of brief, uh, the idea is uh, the tradition in Miami Township is we have generally a two hour limit to meetings. Uh, after two hours, I tend to roll back and, uh, and we need to throw some water on people. So we're going to try and do the best we can. Um, everyone who would like to speak is going to be allowed a three minute uh, time period to speak um, on the subject. We're not going to get too far afield of the subject for the evening and uh, we'll, we'll try and hold everybody to that. There was a sign up sheet and I believe on the sign up sheet it was indicated whether someone wanted to speak or not and we'll go with that format. Uh, I will go down the sheet just from the very first signature down and the first yes that's there. We'll take the podium, although we're not going to use the podium, but we'll take the, yeah, take the table. Um, uh, Starting with a regular order of business? Yes, we are. We're going to do a short amount of uh, business. We're going to take any questions that anybody had real quick, and then I'm going to turn this over to Marilyn, and she will conduct the uh, comment here. So we will call the meeting at 5. We've got to change the clock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know which is which. Uh, okay, I would entertain a motion to adopt the meeting of October 17th minutes. I move that we adopt the minutes. Okay, there's a motion, and I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion regarding those minutes? No, sir. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Thank you. I've now entertained a motion to adopt the uh, payment of, of bills in the amount of one hundred twenty thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars and twenty-six cents. We're going to break that down. General fund ten thousand six hundred thirteen dollars and ninety-six cents. Fire fund sixty-nine thousand six hundred fifty-four dollars and five cents. Cemetery fund ten thousand three hundred seven dollars and twenty-four cents. EMS billing twenty-three thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and forty-nine cents. And the road and bridge fund six thousand two hundred eighty-seven dollars and thirty-eight cents. Is there a motion to approve these bills? Yes. Uh, I'll make the sec I'll make a second. Um, uh, any further discussion regarding payment of those? No? Yes. Yes. On the eve of the levy. Fire is quite a bit higher than it usually is. Is that could be a three week hmm. two pay periods. Two period pay periods within the last mm -hmm. since the last meeting. Okay. That's all I had to say. Okay. Uh, here we go, please. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Did I say that right? Uh, <laughs> close enough. Uh, I did want to mention, and I'm sorry I didn't at the beginning, but there is a third place at the table which doesn't have a seat because the seat's being used. Uh, Trustee Hollister was not able to be at the meeting with us this evening, but uh, he sends his regards. I really wanted to be here. Okay. Yeah. I really, really much. Mm -hmm. um, I think the final order of businesses. Our fiscal officer has a resolution before us this evening. Would you like to present that? Oh, sure. Um, it's resolution 2022-40, amendment of permanent appropriations, whereas an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. In the general fund, I mean, sorry, cemetery fund increased um, contracted services by $9,000. And the fire fund increased repairs and maintenance by $6,000. And the fire fund electricity was increased by $900. And in buildings, it was increased by $2,000. And the EMS billing fund and machinery equipment and furniture was increased by $20,000. Period. What was the resolution number again? I'm sorry. 2022-40. Uh, Thank you. Is there a motion to approve resolution 22-40? Yes. There is a motion, and I will second it. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Yeah, the last item, the increase of 20,000, was that the tanker? The, the, mm -hmm. That was uh, yeah. 
the tank a good deal on a water tank truck that we should certainly take from Cedarville. Okay, thank you. And or Bath Township. Bath Township, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I will now turn the bulk of the meeting over, apparently, to uh, Trustee Moyer to conduct a public comment. Uh, I will, hold, as I said, I will hold the attend the sheet and we'll, we'll call them out, but Ms. Moyer is going to give us some ground rules. <laughs> okay. Um, in some of your testimony that you sent in, people were, well, they were, they were thinking we were um, going to vote necessarily on um, a recommendation that may or may not happen. There isn't one currently on the table, mm -hmm. but one may come of this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the ground rules are three minutes per person, um, and everyone who wants to speak may. Um, I was stopped in Kroger's last week and someone told me, I love watching your meetings on YouTube, which is horrifying, but the, I wish the sound was better. And um, I think we can up our game a little, but so far we have our, our microphone that does a pretty good job. Um, so we got a little bit closer. It's, that one camera is going to be getting all of us. And so as I'm projecting, my voice right now, so I would like you to project your voice because I think there will be a lot of interest in what, um, in viewership online or on YouTube or I guess it's the same thing. And um, rather than have the podium behind the trustees, um, you will, people will make their way to this table to talk, which is right in the line of sight. And um, I had this crazy fantasy that I was going to represent the 18 people like most um, who sent us in um, testimony. Some of you might be here. A lot of the people sent in things and many of them are short and could be read off and there are four or five of them that are lengthy but very important. I hope I don't it looks I'm going to give you all who came today the priority to speak and I've, I've studied this so much over the last week that I think that um, if there's anything that is missed in the discussion, any points that these people brought out at that time, I, I will give them a voice. I want you to know that Chris counted, I don't like to say for and against, because I'm hoping, I saw that the Kingwood project and how it, how it came to us, and if you can imagine being in a living and suddenly you find out that you're going to have this thing that's as big as Glen Helen happen around you and it's from people who are from the East Coast and um, you don't really know, know if their claims are good and you don't really know what's going to happen or how it's going to proceed. That was, I think, really difficult for um, the residents who've been um, very organized and vocal about this, and I think it really um, got off to a bad start. As one person, as one person um, wrote to me, um, the Bob Brecka, who who's, who's very much involved in in in, in solar um, issues, said it, it it works better if it arises from a community. So I think that first impact of who are these East Coasters buying up our farm farmland and telling us what we're going to do and changing my world really had an effect. Today is about the future and if we're going to allow any other um, or recommend um, or plan for variations, perhaps smaller, perhaps differently. Um, <coughs> differently cited, perhaps uh, better accommodated as far as buffers and, and setbacks and um, other guidelines. Um, briefly, besides the, the Kingwood um, effect on this, uh, I had, we had a lot of uh, 
a lot of testimony about the effect on our natural scenic river and this thing we have going as a community who has a lot of natural resources that a lot of people value in, as, as a region. A, a lot of testimony about the loss of farmland um, and reference to um, the big study the, about, uh, what was it called? No, it was the, um, the threat, farmland under threat. Um, I hope to say a lot about um, that study of, of how much farmland we've lost, but I'll let you all speak instead. And then other, um, other testimony about climate change and, and the dire um, effects that many scientists, including the UN, believe are, are coming our way. Um, and then all things in between. And before I turn it over to you guys, um, I'd like to ask everybody to get in a mindset of not being entrenched. And um, I know it's hard not to be defensive when you don't trust that either um, the fossil fuel industry is going to mow you down or that the, um, the, the green energy industry is not going to mow you down um, and not give you much choice. But perhaps my, my biggest hope is that we could come away with some sort of win-win, some sort of creative idea of maybe we could, you know, Maybe they're right, maybe that our farmlands are too valuable to let go, or, or, maybe, or maybe someone else is right, and that um, we, do have, we do have room for creativity. So that's all I have to say, and we'll just let you guys take it from there. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay, we will begin uh, with n number one, and of course, number one writes like I do. Um, <laughs> I do recognize the last name as Sweet. What's the first name? Jane. Jane. Yes. Jane, would you uh, like to uh, approach the table, as it were, <laughs> and start your three minutes? When you, or we'll start your three minutes when you speak. Yes. I'm Jane Spencer Sweet. I'm fourth generation on our family farm, and a fifth generation is going to be coming along too. I was one of the first people to get involved with this, and it was not a bunch of East Coast people. We were farmers. We were looking at ways to be creative, to work with our farmland to improve what our parents and grandparents worked on before that. And I do find it kind of ironic that you know we talk about. NIMBY, um, and we've discussed some of this. Um, yes, we want solar, but not in my, my backyard. And I understand that, and I have no problem with your objection, but I ask you to look at some of these other things. One of the complaints was how much noise these panels make. My house is on State Route 72, and spend a morning there or an evening there, and you hear all of these trucks and drag racers and so forth. Um, in some of the mornings, I'm hearing gunshots uh, from some of the, the rifle ranges around there. So, you know, I, I listen to that. We talk about the fact that possibly these things are ugly, but I see these all over the area, and they're in other parts of the country as well. And this solar energy is going to be staying in this community. It's not going off to the East Coast. Uh, and many parts of one of the things I, I think that the solar and the panels can go into this whole neighborhood. You complain that it's not a rectangle, but yes, it is in different areas. Wildlife can go through here, and that, you know, there is a lot of range working with that. Um, and we should be able to ride our bicycles and enjoy seeing the panels and, and also the, the other things of nature. These all work together over many, many years. And um, 
I would like us to consider that. And we are always looking for better ways to do things on our farms, and we believe that this is very important to us in having clean air in the future. Thank you. Okay, Uh, let's see, Matt McDonald might like, would like to speak. Good evening, Trustees Moyer, Moon Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to testify regarding the importance of keeping Miami Township and Greene County open to solar energy generation and development under recently enacted Senate Bill 52. I'm here on behalf of Vesper Energy Development, the sponsor behind the Kingwood Solar Project. We want to emphasize a few points that demonstrate that the Board of Miami Township Trustees should keep the township and county open to solar development generation. First, the economic development opportunity that these projects represent. Second, the property rights of your constituents. Third, because the county has the ability to reject projects on a project-by-project project basis, such that there is no need to pass moratoriums foreclosing all future development opportunities <coughs> to hammer home on the economic development benefits. Solar projects such as Kingwood Solar bring tremendous economic opportunities to local communities, especially rural communities creating well-paying construction jobs and providing vital tax revenues for schools, infrastructure, emergency services, as well as dependable income for farm owners and landowners. For many farmers, this type of predictable and consistent revenue stream will provide long-term support and financial security for family farming businesses and ensure future generations will have the opportunity to return land to agricultural use after decommissioning of projects occurs. In particular, the Kingwood Solar Project is anticipated to bring a total of 444 Ohio jobs during the six month, 16 month construction period, and it would create approximately $6.75 million in new economic output annually in Ohio, most of which will be generated in Greene County. The operating activities of the project could result in $2 million annually in state and local taxes. Moving on to property rights. Keeping the township and county open to renewable energy generation ensures that essential property rights of farmers and landowners are protected. A countywide poll conducted by Public Opinion Strategies, one of the, county, one of the country's leading public opinion firms, concluded that approximately 63% of voters in Greene County supported this project, compared to 23% that were opposed. Foreclosing solar means restricting landowners' rights to utilize their land as they would like. You need to finish that panel. Thank you. One, just one point, um, Trustee. We ask that you carefully consider the need to pass a moratorium that would close the county and township for business because the Board of County Commissioners can always say no to an individual project on a case-by-case -case basis. And on that note, we would like to emphasize that Kingwood, the Kingwood team has heard the feedback and that the local officials aren't truly against solar, but they want to see it developed in a way that takes into account all stakeholders. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carolyn? I'm uh, Mary Ann Queen. I'm on our Village of Yellow Springs Village Council. I'm the liaison to our Climate Action and Sustainability Program. And we have a meeting at 7, so I'll be leaving there. So, that clock's an hour off, remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at the thing. Um, so we, we're a tiny little dot in this world, but we are facing global issues. We're facing the issues around climate change, species extinction, loss of biodiversity, and now it seems perhaps nuclear war. Unfortunately. All three of these issues 
have been caused by us humans. And they have the possibility of wiping not only our species out, but a whole bunch of other species. So I think it's time for us to get out of the either or kind of mentality, which has all already been discussed. It, we don't want to pit farmland against green energy. That, that will just be a lose-lose situation and it will get us right where we are, which is not in a good place. So I think we need to look at what are the, what are the legitimate concerns regarding solar and then deal with those issues and set aside issues that more are not in my backyard or that appear to be not in my backyard. So we know that in this area, we are one of the bread baskets of the world. I think there are maybe three places in the world. Uh, and we have prime farming. But not all land is equal, even here. So while it's important to preserve farm, prime farmland, there is other areas that potentially could have solar. And when we, I ride my, I'm a cyclist, I ride out in the country, I love looking at the corn and the soybean. But those plants and the farmers that grow them are, in, are beholden to the multinational agribusiness corporations, which are much bigger than Kingwood. So it's not like we're comparing some pristine environment to some thing that's going to wreck our environment. So some of the arguments that have been used against solar, like for example, and Hope Path is one of my heroes, but I disagree with her on the issue of compacting soil because I see those big farm machinery going up and down those fields, and you can't, well, I, I haven't seen a study that says that, that the compaction that would be caused by solar would be any more than, than the compaction caused by the farm. So um, the other thing is that uh, Sometimes a farmer can actually save his or her farm by putting some of that area into solar production. Thank you, Mary. And I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff Garrison. Yeah, my name's Jeff Garrison. I live on Larkins Road. If Kingwood project were to proceed as planned, it would be directly across from my house. So it's not in my backyard, it's in my front yard. <laughs> and I don't want it. I don't want to look at it. I don't want the, the traffic that will come around because of it. There's concern that we're pitting agricultural land against <clears throat> solar. There's good things about both of them. At least agricultural land can get wet. Uh, I think the solar panels can too. But I worry about what happens the next time we have a tornado once these things are in place. I'm sure they'll have insurance and I'm sure they'll replace their panels. But what will it do to the structures, the people in the property that can get damaged by those when they're flying around. And who's responsible? I don't want to take away anybody's property rights. I, under, I understand that if it was my land, I would be tempted. But it's not, and I wasn't. So I just have to go from where I am now. And I don't trust Kingwood. I don't trust Vesper. Nothing personal to the lawyer. Um, but they did this for several years in secret before most of us found out anything about it. And then once the Ohio Power Siding Board staff came out with a recommendation not to approve the program. Oh, now I get a letter in the mail saying, well, we'd like to offer you $7,000, $7,500 to 
drop your opposition. I'm not bribable. That's about all I really have to say. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the Sontag family. <laughs> uh, I'm Tim Sontag, the playwright Lynn. We live on East Tide Road. I just came to voice my support for future large scale solar renewable energy projects. Um, I just feel that the urgency of climate change is sort of overrides other concerns that are sometimes based on aesthetics or just resistance to change, which I, I have sympathy for, if I, but I, um, so I, um, I just feel like we need to owe it to our future generations. When I talk to my children, you know, they don't want to wait for the ideal of all solar being on rooftops and above parking lots. That maybe is the ideal, but, uh, you know, that, that's kicking the can down the road. That can take years of, to work all that out. And we have a project now, or we have other projects presented to us. I just feel like it's our duty, really, to consider all of them as seriously as we can. So without built-in, uh, you know, barriers or uh, things that are passed that say we can't do it. So, uh, I just, it worries me a little bit when our progressive community um, would reject a potential project like this sort of just for the hope of, of sort of nationwide because all these little projects, whether they're, uh, you know, like something for wind or, or tidal generation or solar generation, they all have local communities around them and they're all going to have some local objection. But I think it's just part of um, a sacrifice we all have to make or we'll all be called on to make in some way or another for, our, for the sake of our future uh, children. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Uh, let me see. Lisa. <coughs> My name is Lisa Abel. Um, I live on Winter Street in Yellow Springs, um, and I'm asking that the uh, the trustees not move forward to vote um, on a letter to the Green County Commissioners to declare all future um, larger scale solar and wind projects off limits in the, in our township. And I agree with the idea that. Um, we should slow this down a little bit, not just write this letter and, and, and take everything off the books. That, that, that these are complex questions and, and complex issues that, that require some digging in. Um, so I think that, you know, some points around that, um, enabling landowners to lease renew to renewable energy developers can help keep the local farms in our communities <coughs> financially stable. And I think that, again, that's, the, that's to that property rights uh, concern. There are community solar projects sprouting up um, in regions where solar power can be produced more efficiently um, on open acreage and sold to homes that cannot put solar panels uh, on their houses for one reason or another. Um, and Yellow Springs and our surrounding communities are good candidates for, a, uh, for some community solar projects. You don't have to be these large scale um, types of projects that send, send power uh, off to Alaska. Um, and we should, uh, we should be working with local stakeholders to resolve concerns about their views, agriculture, use of land. Um, other places have been able to figure this out, and we're pretty smart here. I think we can figure this out as well. But we need to kind of slow this down and, and, and get some folks together to, to figure out what those issues are and how we can serve ourselves better and in the future. Um, and I guess, you know, my question to the, to the trustees would be, in, you know, from how this was developed at the last meeting, what, what are the real concerns? Um, what, are, what, are, what are you worried about that you want to be addressed? And can we as a community help address those concerns rather than just sending a letter off to the county to, uh, 
to take this completely off the table. Um, and then, uh, how do we how do we work together on on what fits for all of us? Um, what does renewable energy need to be for someone whose property is surrounded by trees, or somebody whose property is right on the Little Miami? And they don't want to do anything to degrade that. So again, we have we have a lot of different things we need to consider, and I would like to see the process slow down so we can we can figure these things out together. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Laura Spidmore. So my name is Laura Skidmore, and I live here. I'm local. Um, I wasn't going to read my letter because I sent my letter, but I, then I had second thoughts and thought it's important for me to stand up and be a voice here in public. So I'm going to read my letter. It should be under three minutes. I'm writing to urge you not to ban large-scale solar in the township. I believe that would be a short-sighted and reactionary move that would harm Miami Township land and residents in the long term. Any ban would be permanent, regardless of technological advances or a specific solar project's design. Opponents frequently cite the amount of land needed for a 50 megawatt solar farm as a reason they're against it. But a ban would prohibit all 50 megawatt solar farms, regardless of how much land they actually use. There are two opportunities in solar energy that Miami Township might want to take advantage of in the future. First, agrivoltaic farms combining solar panels with plant or animal agriculture has tremendous potential. Research has taken off in the last five years and is showing enormous potential for agrivoltaic models. So that keeps the agriculture in it. That keeps the land and farm production. Second, new solar panel designs are being created to conserve water and land. With ongoing research and advances in technology, who knows what utility scale solar might look like in 10 years let alone 20 or 30. One future proposal might be a 100 megawatt solar farm that combines solar panels and sheep on 200 acres, producing energy, food, and fiber on the same piece of land. Another might use advances in solar panel efficiency and design to reduce the footprint of the 50 megawatt solar farm to just 50 acres, conserving land and water. My main point here is we don't know what's going to be possible in the future. But the decisions that are made now, if we ban it, are going to prevent us from taking part in the future, in where the world is going. It's going to put us behind in competition with everyone else in the world. As we wrap up 2022 and discuss the proposed ban on utility scale solar in the township, we can be certain of three things. One, the world will continue shifting to renewable energy. And if we don't embrace it, we are going to be left behind. Two, the solar, the solar industry will continue to innovate. Technology will get better and smaller and more efficient. And three, we have no idea what opportunities could come our way in the future that we will miss out on if we ban solar outright. And let me be clear utility scale solar. I know right now we're not talking about residential solar. A ban on large scale solar projects would only hurt us by limiting our future options. It would close the door on cutting edge farms and innovative solutions to our energy and climate crises. Thank you. <laughs> climate change is also the number one threat, I'm sorry, not number one, one of the biggest threats to the Little Miami, according to the watershed. Um, let's see if we get this right. Marilyn Ben Benes, is that what you mean? Hi, my name is Marlon Banks. Yeah. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pronounced much, uh, much better. Uh, we live on uh, Clifton Road by Nick Clifton, and as a 
35 year recently retired physicist, I am really sorry that so many people have so much emotional involvement in the solar industry. Um, there are there's so much has happened so quickly that very few people have a real good handle on what are the real economics, what are the real long-term benefits and gains which we haven't had time to see. And instead, through government subsidies and, uh, and uh, public pressure, we are in some areas racing ahead on, in an unknown, unknown manner. My problems with, with uh, Kingwood was the fact that uh, this is not a small company. This is backed by a large investment company out of Indianapolis right now. Uh, billions of dollars on the books. This is, this is big money. Looking at a technical standard or a technical aspects, um, there are some things that just don't make sense. This company is not has a history of actually operating solar and yet was making a lot of promises that, that when you compare them to other operations don't make sense. Um, I think for people who are really worried about the climate, it, it's a good idea to look at what are we actually after? We're actually after saving energy. Um, there are thousands of homes in, in Ohio that aren't insulated. The amount of energy that you'd save there would be huge. And in addition, you would help people with lower incomes. Banning or reducing our dependence on oil to the expense of uh, non-renewable, uh, dependable solar uh, is only going to hurt the people at the bottom of the income stratus. Let's. I agree, we should take a step back and look at what are the real effects and what are the real advantages of going to a interruptible power source as opposed to non-interruptible. Um, I think until the people who um, are super interested in solar actually have their own solar panels installed, they really don't have too much of a leg to stand on. Um, and the other aspect is, we have no idea what condition the land will be after 35 years of being in the solar farm. The only reason Kingwood is where it's at, proposed to be, is because of an accident in excess transmission line capacity. There's no other explanation for it being there. It's not a great place for solar. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very fragmented plan. And I think that's going to be seen with, with any other large scale, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, any negative, uh, <coughs> if, if, if Miami County decides that it doesn't want large scale, I don't see why that has to be permanent. Uh, and the fact, you know, nothing is, nothing is written in stone anymore. Thank you, Mom. Appreciate it. Uh, Bob. Mm -hmm. There's only one. <laughs> oh, that right? Yeah. Uh, Bob Houston. I'm uh, living at 370 um, in Miami Township. Um, I have submitted a, a letter of opposition uh, to the trustees, and it includes a number of <coughs> different things that. Uh, uh, I'm not going to repeat right now, but I, I do want to bring out one, one point that is, I guess I'm slightly tainted by the, the Kingwood uh, project in which uh, individuals that sign lease and they promote the fact that <clears throat> farm land will be, can be decommissioned after 30 or 40 years. Um, to my knowledge, there's there's no examples of this that's ever ever been done, and I think it's a it's a um, unreasonable projection by the solar industry to say this, and it makes people feel good that <clears throat> uh, we can return the farmland, but once once it's lost uh, through the installations, it's no different than if we pave it over. 
for um, moles or uh, other, other purposes. So I think it's a pipe dream, and I think that needs to be uh, really considered when we, when we give up this farmland. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe? There he is. Mr. Kreitzer, how's that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Joe Kreitzer. I have property in Cedarville, Miami, and Zenia Township. Uh, I've been in this thing since the very beginning. Um, it was offered to me to lease my land into it, and I rejected the offer, gave it a lot of thought, communicated with Lamar, talked to Mark, several people, Jane, Sweet, that signed up, and ask them reasons why they do what, did what they did and stuff and you hear this economic thing that uh, it's going to help our family farm and all this stuff. There's not one person in, that's in farming in here that is uh, broke, believe me. Uh, there's all of all this that is not, that's not true. But anyhow, what really frustrated me in the very beginning, Joe, Joe Jordan was the one that brought this in here from Texas. I had a conversation with Joe Jordan in the very beginning. He was the developer and get the thing off the, the ground floor. And what really turned me off with the whole thing is I said, well, how come you didn't come in the community just like we were talking about? And let's have a conversation. Let's do it a little bit smaller scale. Let's take advantage of Cedarville, Miami Town, or Miami Township, Cedarville Township, and Zenia. Let's make one to, to take care of this whole thing. Let's form a co-op. Let's do all these things. And I said, why don't you consider that? He says, because we don't have to. That's what you call capitalism. I said, well, so you're not willing to work or talk to us and stuff. He said, I don't have to. So we go through uh, Joe Jordan. We go through uh, John Sonnenden. We go through a Daniel Brown. Uh, we went through, did I say Bill and Stickney? We're up to another one now. So we have like five, six uh, people in charge, managers of the projects. We go from the owners in the very beginning uh, to, to like we're on the third or fourth owners of the company and we don't know who's doing what. So you tell me in today's world, if you have a problem, who are you going to go to? Why do you form LLCs? Is not best for an LLC? If we have a problem, we go to them and we have the have litigation or something, it, it, you, you would spend $20 million to try to figure out who you're going to get the, the, the re resolve to the problems that you have. So I just don't, we have never been against solar from the very beginning. So get that out of the way. We have always said, let's do it just like the one lady here said, let's put it in the places that will be tucked away, give it to the farmers, let them put 40 acres out, let them get the grants and the subsidies and stuff instead of giving it to the billion dollar companies why not give it to them and help them develop it in small co-ops and stuff, and they can sell the electricity and stuff, hook it into the lines. It's because the people at the top are chopping the legs out from the little people. They don't want that to take place because there's too much money that we're giving these companies to do all this stuff with. So it's it just frustrating <coughs> to me that they say that they're willing to work with us now, but in the very beginning, they didn't want anything to do with us. Mm -hmm. Until the, prob the, the project was rejected, or recommended for denial from the OPSB board staff, now they're coming to us and say, hey, let's, let's, let's sit back down now, let's talk. Well, that's not the way it was in the beginning, because I asked several people and, and tried to sit down with people. I went to the Ohio Department of Agriculture and tried to talk to them. I went to Joe, uh, we had to wrap this up. We've got oh, the, the, the county, and we've talked. We've tried all these things. So don't let don't go on the basis that we have not tried to communicate because that's not the way this whole thing is going down. Uh, Nicole Marvin. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> My name is Nicole Marvin. I live in Cedarville Township, and I'm here this evening in support, in support of my neighbors. I am speaking on behalf of myself and not citizens for Green Acres. Thank you, trustees, for taking the time to add this topic to the agenda and for your willingness to listen. The passage of Senate Bill 52 has raised the voice of rural Ohioans 
so we can now be heard better by the OPSB. It allows us to restrict areas of our townships, prohibiting the OPSB from accepting an application for a certificate to construct, operate, or maintain a utility facility in those areas essentially protecting us from a repeat of the expensive and exhausting endeavor with Kingwood. It takes approximately 7 to 10 acres to produce 1 megawatt of electricity. The OPSB oversees solar projects that are 50 megawatts or greater. So the question becomes, does Miami Township have more than 350 acres available for these projects? Responsible sites to consider for utility-scale solar plants include rooftops, contaminated lands or brownfields. I contacted Richard Zoff, Miami Township Zoning Inspector, to ask if Miami Township has 350 or more acres available for this use. They do not that he knows of as of last week. Therefore, Miami Township should be restricted from these projects at this time. The simple truth is that steel and glass are not crops and it is not good stewardship to cover arable land with them. Unfortunately, in the midst of wanting to save our planet, find clean energy options, and be green, people have been convinced that it is beneficial to cover ag land and solar panels and wind turbines. I won't take the time to read the ORC definition of agriculture, but let me assure you solar panels and wind turbines are not included in it. One cannot grow steel or glass. American Farmland Trust 2020 Farms Under Threat report states that the U.S. is home to 10% of the planet's arable soils, the most of any country on Earth. Only 18% of the continental U.S. is nationally significant land. The NS Farmland designation was developed to identify the most productive, versatile, and resilient land for sustainable food and crop production. Said land is the most important land for long-term food security, and environmental health. Miami Township has part of the country's 18% nationally significant land, a treasure. American Farmland Trust recently released their Farms Under Threat 2040 report. It states, without further policy intervention, 2.9 million acres of utility-scale solar are expected to be built between 2022 and 2040, However, the Biden administration has called for eliminating all fossil fuels from the electricity sector. Estimates of the amount of utility-scale solar needed to achieve this goal by 2040 range from 5 to 7 million acres. The report also states AFT projected that more than 80% of new solar built by 2040 will be sited on ag land. AFT modeling found that if standard modeling practice practices mirror historical patterns, 40% of new solar installations on ag land could go on nationally significant land. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate it. Jennifer? Yeah. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Adams. I am a rural Miami Township resident and the president of Citizens for Green Acres. I'm speaking on behalf of myself today. Based on the last four years I've spent dealing with Kingwood and the OPSB process, I am strongly in favor of declaring all of Miami Township an exclusionary zone in accordance with Senate Bill 52. It's important to remember that SB 52 does not determine the future of all wind and solar in Miami Township. It only applies to utility scale <coughs> wind and solar projects that fall under the OPSB's jurisdiction. For solar, that means a facility of 50 megawatts or greater. Exclusionary zones established using SB 52 do not impact large-scale or community-scale solar projects, such as those in Yellow Springs and Cedarville or residential solar. For me, this isn't a debate about whether <coughs> utility-scale solar is right or wrong. It's about where in Ohio it should go and who is responsible for determining that. Unfortunately, Ohio did not establish a comprehensive plan for the responsible siting of utility-scale solar. Ohio has not considered what responsible siting looks like, what land is best suited for these sprawling industrial power plants, or what land should be protected from these facilities because it is better suited for agricultural activities. In the absence of a state-level plan, who's responsible for deciding this? SB 52 granted townships and counties the authority and responsibility 
to determine whether utility scale wind and solar are compatible with their existing and future land use plans. The agricultural land in Miami Township is the best farmland in the country, predominantly comprised of what the American Farmland Trust refers to as nationally significant farmland. Miami Township understands the value of our agricultural land, having already determined that it must be preserved and that it's not appropriate for the siting of industrial activities such as utility scale solar. Our zoning and land use plans are clear. I'm simply asking Miami Township to ensure our existing plans are respected during the, the siting of utility scale solar. Rural residents of Miami Township are not obligated to accept the burden of utility scale solar. In fact, because Ohio has no plan to protect the state's most valuable land assets, we actually have an obligation to stand up and protect them ourselves. Kingwood Solar has taught us that local zoning and land use plans are essentially irrelevant in the OPSB process and that it costs townships and residents dearly to participate in that process. There are those who claim SB 52 is simply a political ploy against solar. Let me assure you, for the hundreds of township residents who have been directly impacted by Kingwood, it's not about politics. For us, it's about protecting our rural communities from the threat of another utility-scale solar facility. We know the value of what we have here in Miami Township, and it's clear no one is going to protect it but us. We must take back the authority to determine what responsibly sited solar looks like in Miami Township. And it, it would be great, I agree, this is off topic, but, or not off topic, but outside of my plan. Uh, it would be great, I agree, to slow down and develop a solid community plan for solar. But it's important to understand that utility scale projects at the OPSB actually take that option away from us. We didn't have a say. And they didn't listen to what we wanted or what we needed, even if it included solar. So Thank don't you. forget that. Thank you. Uh, Wilford Simon. Hi, Wilford Simon. I live in Yellow Springs. I really think we need more so local sources of clean energy. And who needs uh, proper regulation, and as people were saying some, there is no regulation. I don't know what the deal is in that, and your body of that, and I am. But so I do really think, hey, you do need regulation, and I, I, I have a big problem with that too. But I do think if it's regulated right, you should be able to uh, cite it so that in 30 or 40 years, you can uh, put it back to the farm because the people will give them the farmland rest for 30, 40 years. But, you know, that has to be regulated. And if you think of a corporation, whatever it is, there might be a problem. But I do think we should preserve the flexibility for the future. And it does allow for some farmers to have a reliable source of income. So I'm against any ban. Thank you. Sir? Hi, Chris. Hi, Malta. Hi, Hi. Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, my name is uh, Malta Bat Addison, and uh, yeah, so I've lived in the Yellow Springs community for a long time, since uh, 1969. And uh, Lisa, I thought your letter to the it was terrific. We've known each other a long time. Um, I really want to sort of address a process question. And, uh, I think there are options that we could, that haven't perhaps been fully pursued to sort this out so we can create a win-win for everybody. And you know, when I was struck by the language that it's off limits, it's sort of a draconian door clangs mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. and that's the end. So I think one of the great uh, gifts of this community that we live in 
is that over the years we have been able to uh, collaborate, work together to find solutions that empower the majority. So that's it's really my comments are really more directed towards the process mm -hmm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, Steve Adams. Good evening. My name is Steve Adams. I live in the rural Miami Township. Um, I'll just jot a couple of things down here. I, I think I need to reiterate that the uh, I am for the exclusionary, the total exclusionary. Uh, zone of Miami Township. Um, again, this this is only protecting us from the overreach of our our, our state authorities, and basically uh, circumventing any kind of zoning laws that we have in place for our community. And that's really all this is uh, uh, is protecting us from. We still have the option to try to explore uh, better usage, better technologies. We're all for that, um, but again, if if we don't set up exclusionary zones, the state will come in and tell us what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Um, that doesn't sit well with me. Um, you know, property rights—that's one thing that that's always coming up. Uh, you know. We all have to meet zoning requirements um, just because the state's coming in and, and, and pushing some industrial scale solar plant on us uh, doesn't, doesn't, well, it shouldn't exempt anyone from that. Um, and I would just like to say that uh, this uh, Vesper, whoever they're going by now, this, this whole situation has been predatory or, and just uh, manipulative uh, is really all I can say about it. Uh, they've they've tried to they've tried to just uh, smoke screen us the whole way. They they've been less than than honest, and they they make plenty of promises which have no foundation, and uh, especially from from a. a a historical, they work these projects standpoint hasn't happened. They'll tell you different, but that won't be accurate. Um, so, just to uh, end the era of my ramblings, is, uh, I, I think all of Miami Township should be excluded just to protect us from this uh, big scale stuff, and, and we can work and, and do our community thing and. and improve our situation instead of jumping on this first first thing that could leave us really regretting our decision. So, thank you. Hey Steve. Appreciate it. Well, well let's see how this the maybe comes out from Cheryl coming out. I think it's a yes. <laughs> well let me mark that down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Cheryl Cunningham and I live in Yellow Springs. And I think really what I just am going to do, I'm going to be brief and just um, echo the point that Lisa made. And that what I'm hearing, when I'm hearing people talk about this, it seems like there is so much um, kind of pain and uncertainty around the Kingwood project that it's sort of driving us maybe in a direction that we all don't want to go. And so when I've been listening to people, and trying to separate, like what is what is about this bad experience with Kingwood, and what what is really about um, solar? And what I'm hearing from people is that most people in the room think that solar can be a good idea, might be a good idea under certain circumstances. And so that's that's where I'm at too. I am extremely sympathetic to arguments about the loss of farmland, and so I hear I hear that. But I don't want us to foreclose all the possibilities for solar that might come up in the future. So I would just say that I would encourage 
uh, the trustees to think about this, uh, this idea of the win-win and keep thinking about that and keep thinking about how we might get there. And I would encourage them not to prohibit installation of large solar energy arrays on land zone for agricultural use at this time and see if we can get something on it. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Well, we have another maybe, Gary. I guess this is a it's yes. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, we came to that point. Is it? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm Gary Saramski. I've lived here in town for a while. And this has been very interesting to listen to. I read Lisa's letter. I thought I really like how she articulated some of her points. I like some of the things you said initially. And there's been a number of people who have spoken who have been very articulate about it. So the thing, though, that comes to mind is, is um, corporations, American corporations, other corporations, seem to operate in a very top-down manner and often very heavy-handed. Okay. I don't think anybody here is going to say, yes, I like that, um, because it, it has unintended consequences. My concern is that a, a response, a reaction to that also be heavy-handed, and I'm very concerned about, about supporting something that's sort of a, a permanent prohibition or whatever. Um, but the thing is, it, it just is it's a very complicated issue. There's some, there's some technical factors to you know, that, that, that there's disagreement on. And of course, there's, there's really strong emotional factors and, and, and that, that have to be addressed. And, but I'd like to think, um, and maybe I'm naive, but um, um, I'd like to think that there are, if, if you, you, you work things out and once again, slow it down, as many people have suggested, getting parties together and, and figuring out what might be a rational, acceptable approach that might be different than an original plan that can that, that people can live with that's that um, you know has elements of this and elements of that because um, and, and I'm confident there won't be an easy solution because because of just the nature of things mm -hmm. so but the immediate thing is I, I am concerned about about um, um, taking an action that uh, someone suggested it's draconian, which is one of my favorite words, um, that, that, that pushes towards a permanent state of things. It just, I'm concerned that that just doesn't work to our benefit mm -hmm. as we try to come up with a, a more of a group-based um, approach to something. So, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Gary. Continuing down the, the maybe list, um, Kyle Shelton is a definite maybe. <laughs> oh, now we're up to the yes. Good. Uh, all right, so I'm Kyle Shelton. Um, I live in Miami Township on Harbison Road. Um, we'll be uh, significantly impacted by the Kingwood project if it's approved. Uh, so the first thing I, I guess I'd want to do is um, uh, show my appreciation and, and public support for the, the board and, and the other uh, townships for their efforts intervening on the Kingwood project. I think uh, that means a lot to a lot of people in this room. Um, the community spoke at a number of forums, um, in person, online, through the formal process, and, and you guys responded, and, and I really appreciate that. And I think that's what um, local government is, is for, and it, it gives me a little bit of hope, I guess. Um, and then for everyone else, I, I guess I would just emphasize what what's been said that Senate Bill 52 isn't necessarily a for or against solar um, uh, law. I, it seems that way, but it's, I, I think it's more about authority to make decisions in your own uh, local community um, for the same reason that everyone's in this room today. Um, you obviously have a, a, a deep root concern about something going on in your community. I think we can all agree, if nothing else, we can agree that, that it's important to be able to, to speak your mind and, um, and provide your opinion on, on local issues. And that's not how we feel the OPSB process has been. I think you have an opportunity to speak your mind, uh, uh, but you feel pretty voiceless in that process. Um, you're pitted against a large corporation that you just can't compete with, um, with resources and time and expertise. Um, and I think Senate Bill 52 gives gives us the opportunity to take back some of that authority. Um, and I, I feel like, 
I have a, a hard time thinking that anybody opposed to this provision um, uh, ha has been exposed to that process. Um, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I, I truly just mean that I, I can't fathom the thought of, of folks coming into a local forum like this and essentially walking out on the same side as, as corporations that have torn this community apart. Um, uh, it, it's really, it's an ugly process, and I think this is something that really gives us an opportunity to uh, maybe not fix it, but uh, try to make it a little bit better. Um, I've heard concern about uh, shutting the door to solar forever. I don't, that's not how I view Senate Bill 52. I, I understand and, and can appreciate the concerns about, uh, well, solar will get there. Um, it, it, it'll get better. It'll be more uh, uh, cost efficient and effective and more environmentally friendly than, than it is today. It probably will, I hope it will. I'm, I'm confident that it will. Um, but I agree with you, it's not today. Um, and so I, I think it's fair to, to um, give ourselves an opportunity to deny projects like that in our, um, in our local communities. So uh, that's all I've got. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Uh, where are we? Scott, five? Okay, uh, my name is Scott Fife. I live in Yellow Springs. I've been following this whole uh, drama for a couple of years pretty closely. And uh, I, I would, I've always believed that people of good faith can disagree about solutions to public policy problems. I uh, believe that compromise is the method by which we resolve those disagreements. And I also think that facts and reasons must be the essential tools that are needed to achieve that compromise. Now, with that said, I bet I'm not the only one in this room for whom my faith in those things has been shaken to the core in the last five years or so. Um, uh, nevertheless, I'd like to share a few uh, semi-random facts and a couple of opinions. Um, so here go the facts. Uh, climate change is real. It's, it's not made up. It's not manufactured. It's not a plot of, the, uh, uh, of anybody. It's real. The science is, is not really questionable on that. We've heard a lot of talk about Senate Bill 52 tonight. Prior to October 2021, the public utility exemption meant that townships and counties had no zoning authority with regard to infrastructure public utilities. The reason for that, historically, was that local regulations could and had interfered with the business of supplying electric utility services for Ohio residents the vast majority of whom don't live in urban areas. Um, Senate Bill 52, which by the way, I must say, was brought to you by the same folks behind the $60 million first energy bribery scandal, has been called the worst energy bill of the 21st century by a number of knowledgeable followers of the energy sector. Um, I did not come here to talk about the Kingwood problem in, in particular, so I'll just skip over that and we'll go to a couple of things that I think are relevant here. Um, heard a lot of comments about the process of the OPSB. Uh, my observation of that process was essentially it became a popularity vote. I sat through four hours of a hearing where the administrative law judges stood up there and made check marks in the column, four against, four against, four against. There was no attention paid whatsoever to the merits of any arguments. I heard some of the most ridiculous arguments I could imagine being put forth, but it was for or against. Um, here's another fact. Since July of 2021, the taxpayers of Miami Township have paid $17,112 in legal fees to fight the Kingwood Solar Project. Um, that's, that's most of our money, those sitting here. Here's another fact. Um, and I say this with all due respect to the folks on the other side of the table for me. Um, the Citizens for Green Acres folks have been incredibly well organized. They've done a really admirable job of fighting for what they believe in. And I believe that they believe in it. Um, yeah, we're, we're at the time. Okay, well then I guess I will leave you with two opinions. Uh, if you think the loss of farmlands are the biggest problem, take a drive over to Beaver Creek and look at, at what's going on over there. Um, it's not solar fields, it's development. And finally, NIMBY is just not a policy. It's just not. Thank you very much. Keela, are you 
Davis. Here she is. I'm Gila Pomeranz, um, a lifelong resident of Yellow Springs, born and <coughs> raised here, but I actually now live on the very edge of uh, Miami and Cedarville Township on the uh, Miami Township side. Don't I'm, slip over that side now. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I go around. Okay. Um, I'm lucky that it's not in my backyard because I have a farm in my backyard that is opposed to it. But yet it still is. What is in my backyard, and all our metaphorical backyards, is John Bryan State Park, Glen Helen, Clifton Gorge, and the Little Miami Scenic River. Um, and I think our township is unique in those natural treasures, and we have an obligation to err on the side of protecting them by keeping out large-scale, utility-scale, industrial-scale solar. I agree that we need to talk about solar energy and wind energy and, ha and have that, but the scale of um, the utility level is just too potentially detrimental to our natural treasures. And the other thing that I hadn't planned to say, but since this has come up is I agree with the people that say if you haven't dealt with the OPSB you don't want to and this HB or SB 52 protects us from that entity and we owe it to the Glen and John Bryan and the Gorge and the Little Miami. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Did you want to speak or not? Yeah, I think about it. Because I've heard some of the discrepancies. To... Good evening. My name is Stuart Young. Uh, I've had a Yellow Springs address my entire life. Uh, I'm now on this side of the county line, and my wife and I live on East Eden Road. I spent 10 years as the Attorney General's uh, appointee to the Ohio Consumer Council Board of Directors. And I resigned last year to take a, to represent the governor at the PUCO nominating council. Uh, a couple things I want to I'm agnostic to whether you pass a resolution or anything. Um, as a consumer council representative, we were always uh, representing consumers to get the cheapest electric rates possible in the state of Ohio. So beyond that. There's a couple things about Senate Bill 52 that I'm here to tell you about. One, I hope in my lifetime that it actually has some effect. Right now it has zero effect because the way the certificates are given by FERC and PJM, there were 76 certificates issued prior to Senate Bill 52. Like all other bills that you read about in the newspaper, the details are usually on page 78 of an 80-page bill. Senate Bill 52 has no effect on Kingwood because the certificates had already been issued. So Senate Bill 52 really doesn't take effect until new certificates are issued. Two months ago, PJM announced that instead of 36 months to get a certificate for connectivity, it's now going to be 60 because they've gotten swamped with so much throughout the 13 state region. Okay, so enough of that. The bill you want to start watching is House Bill 450, introduced in the spring, and is now in committee, and I can tell you that the Senate hasn't even touched it yet, but it deals with community solar projects. What is a community solar project? 349.9 megawatts or less, okay? Farm Bureau says it usually takes 300 to 312. Your numbers were about spot on. That you said seven to 10 acres, that's about right. 300 to 320 acres to have a community solar project. It's the wild west out there on community solar projects because there are no rules. And so that's a bill that you wanna watch here once we get past the election, if they do anything with it, lame duck, or then start in it at the next <coughs> session. So. I, to me, as whether it's an 1,100 acre or 300 acres, if you're sitting, who said it was in their front yard? <laughs> who said it? You did. You said it was in your front yard. Whether it's 300 acres or 1,100 acres, if it's in your front yard, it's in your front yard. So, 
That's a bill that I think everyone should keep an eye on as it starts to make its way through our legislature. Um, what is the billing to do? It's going to help regulate community, small community solar projects. And like I said, the language is new. It's just in committee, so it's going to change and go back and forth. But that's time, sir. Yep. Quickly. Indeed. There you go. Right, thank you. You've had it. Uh, the next speaker, I wish I could read the name. Let me see if I can find out um, whoever signed in bef the, right before Bill McCutty. <laughs> it's your turn. Anybody? What number was that? It was number 33. Is it a, a Sam? Tom? Maybe a Tom? Tom Markley? Tom Markley. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Don't hide there, I'm Tom Markley. I live in uh, Miami Township. I'm not a public speaker, but I want to try and make some points. Um, I'm for the project. I'm pushing 80 years old, and uh, if it goes through, I can retire. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to work the rest of my life. Um, I'm also a keeper, a beekeeper that is, and uh, they, Kingwood says they will plant pollinator plants on all other projects, so that would definitely help me. And uh, this coal thing, 21% of, of the electricity generated today in the United States is from coal. Um, if everybody gets an electric car, how are they going to charge them all? Because we're just on the verge of not enough electricity now. Uh, if you can't charge those cars, what's going to happen? They're going to have to open those closed coal plants. Your electric car is going to be a coal burn. Uh, our President of the United States said in a campaign statement, this week, that he will shut down all of the coal-fired plants. So where are we going to get electric? Let's move from the coal to the back to the solar. Okay. <coughs> okay. No. okay. <laughs> You're welcome to speak more. But, uh, Bill. I'm Bill McCutty. I live on Wilbur Falls Clifton Road in Miami Township. Um, I don't have a lot to say beyond what's already been said here before. I've worked in the uh, military world for 25 years, and one of the sayings that I learned there really quick was, if you want it bad, that's the way you get it bad. And I think that with the Kingwood project, that was <coughs> what we were headed for. I don't think that, that uh, we can get away in the future without some sort of renewable energy, but I don't think that industrial scale solar um, is a fit for Miami Township. Um, I think because of its proximity to our parks and the river um, and to uh, a whole lot of people that are living around it, that uh, it would seriously degrade the, uh, the life, the, the quality of life here in Miami Township. Um, you know, I look around and see, you know, where would be a good place for industrial scale solar? And I look over to the CMAX plant, the, uh, the big cement plant over there that's right now munching um, agricultural land and leaving a brown field. And the only reason that one wouldn't want to put one there is because maybe the power lines aren't there right now. But to me, that's an obvious fit. Uh, we've got a huge brown field. It's really big. And it would accommodate any kind of solar project. That's really all I have. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm now going to go back to the beginning. Is there anyone who signed the sign up sheet who did not speak, who changed their mind and would like to speak at this time? Do you want more speakers? <laughs> I didn't even see the list, so I didn't even get an opportunity. Sign up and stay in Okay. <laughs> And you are? I'm Vicki Baines. My husband, Marlon, spoke. Uh -huh. We live on Clifton Road, and we would be surrounded on two sides by solar panels. 
and people have talked about them in, you know, like this is just this simple black thing that sits out there and does nothing. Jennifer has gone down to this one of the solar fields down by Wilmington. They're very noisy. They make a lot of noise. Because um, every time they move, it's click, 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 click all the way down the road. And they follow the sun. The other thing is, we already know that we're five degrees cooler at our front door than we are in, at Kroger's in Fairborn. If these go up around us, it's going to get hot. It's going to be hotter where we are now. We're going to lose that advantage of five degrees, and possibly it'll be five degrees warmer than that. So, you know, this idea of it's going to help keep the planet cool is kind of silly. My husband has brought out before these solar panels are made in China. The wind generators are made in Germany and China. There is no no um, uh, environmental protection agency in those countries. The people that make these, you know, have to put up with the pollution. And the solar panels make a lot of pollution. They, they, they make, a, you know, a big mess. They put stuff into the soil that's detrimental to health. It's not, it, they're not a good thing that way. We're not producing them here in the United States. If we're not, then shame on us. Um, and we don't know what happens after they're no longer any good anymore. We lived out in California on the desert. They had a solar farm by Boron. It's no more. They had the wind generators on the Tehachapi's. Many of them have been taken down and dismantled. They have to deal with that, where to, where to discard these, and they don't have any means of doing that yet. So it's... There's just a whole lot of silly things that people don't consider at all. And out in California, nobody can charge their cars at night. Because guess what? The wind stops blowing at night, and the sun stops shining. So, okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else who had signed up? <laughs> didn't want to speak when they signed up, but changed their mind. OK. Anyone who came in late or did not sign the sheet, who would like to speak? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> Your name? I'm Jerry Wyant. I live on Harbison Road. <clears throat> but uh, one, one of the things I want to, it's kind of a little bit what people have been saying up to this point, is I think we need a plan of what we're going forward and doing. I think at, the, at this point we need to have a block until we could come up with a good plan. So I would suggest that we would ban some of those long-term solar uh, projects. Um, the reason I would look at that is I look at a community, you look at Indiana, where they don't have the ability to do the block. People not, may not be aware of right now, but Indiana has a 12,000 square foot, or acre, sorry, 12,000 acre solar farm. It's one of the largest that is operational. They just uh, started construction on a second one that's 12,000, and they just got past one for 18,000 square uh, things. They don't have anything stopping, so they're just going. If you want a question, just Google solar, or large solar farms in Indiana. It'll just fill your thing up. The 18,000 square foot will be the largest in the country, and it is bigger than the um, island of Manhattan. So it is, you know, that's there. I look at that, that's all within the last year that those three projects have gone in. That's Indiana that's not controlling it. You can see how these are just taking over. So I think we need something that says we have control and we will allow and plan and stuff, allow the community to come together to determine this is what we want to do and how we want to move forward. Thank you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Anyone else who didn't sign up who would like to speak? <coughs> I don't really want to speak, but I'm going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any name? Jed Hanna. I live in my own township. I own Mobile Force Pilton Road. I'm surrounded by solar panels. I'm uh, very against the project. And any uh, and other upcoming projects? You know, we're, I had good neighbors at one time. I now don't know who my neighbors are going to be. They come up to my back door and 
they're going to be able to do whatever they want. And it sounds like and it's just driven by government money. So, um, I'm just very emotional about the whole situation. Um, it, you know, it's, I talked to a buddy of mine that's, he's actually diverting tile lines on the projects that are going on now. He said they come in, they weren't supposed to disturb the soils, they're stripping the topsoil. They're doing whatever they want. It's a huge mess. They, you know, it's big corporations and we just need to have some say in what's going down here. So, help us please. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Mr. Chair, can I add something to what he just said? Let me quickly ask if there's anyone who yeah. has not. Yeah. Oh, okay, please. Just hold on a second. <coughs> uh, my name is Bob Albrecht. I have land on Harbison Road that would be surrounded by the civil project. I'm against the project. I think when you look at the John Bryan Clifton Road and all those things in this uh, area, that industrial utilities of any kind are really not a good fit, probably. I don't think anybody's against solar here, or for solar, really. But I think putting it in places that are um, brownfields or along the interstate where people don't want to live um, makes sense. And putting it in, uh, it, uh, a wind for solar in this, this area is a loss for agriculture. This is my big point. And if you get a thousand dollars an acre rent, you should be getting a, if you're going to convert your land to industrial land, you should be getting orders of magnitude more dollars than that. It's not a fair deal to convert your land from an egg to the solar under this scenario. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Who signed up or came late or whatever what would like to speak? If not, this is just a bit of information. Okay. Within the last 60 days, the PUCO has now formed an enforcement team. There was a solar project down by Cincinnati, and the neighbors called and complained and said they're not abiding by the agreement. And so now the PUCO now has an enforcement team, and down there they shut the project down and made them restart over, et cetera. So I will say that when they say that the Ohio Power Siding Board doesn't listen, that might be true. If anybody reads the Ohio Power Siding Board statute, they have five boxes to check. Right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Five boxes. That's all they can do is check those five boxes. And eight boxes. Okay. <laughs> five by statute. But anyways, my point is is that there is some reaction to all this onslaught of oncoming projects. There is some reaction in Columbus to try to better handle all this. That's, I'm just giving information, not opinion. I have a question that you may or may not know the answer to. Does that apply only to renewables, or is it true for more typical utilities, too? It only, it, it only applies to things that the PUCO and the Ohio Power Signing Board oversee, which is 50 megawatts a day. But I, what I mean is, like, gas infrastructure. Ohio uh, Power Siding oh. Board does all gas infrastructure sites. So the enforcement team applies to that too? They will. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have a question for you guys, if I could ask it. Um, my understanding is that those are the ones who actually if act on it. You guys and put in place the ban, right? Correct. I don't know what to call so it. That means a letter in 10 years, we wanted the to commission revoke it. The commissioners would be the ones who actually have to do that. We don't actually have control over that. Is that That's right? That's my understanding. That's I don't understanding. know what the process is for them to revoke it at any time in the future. Obviously, it can't be irrevocable, but whether it's just done by a new set of commissioners, I, I don't know. Right, so that so that's just a concern that? I have. I'm sorry. Do you know that, how it's revoked? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I'm, I don't know. Because we, we have talked about having con local control over it by putting this ban in place, mm -hmm. but really it's not us. Mm -hmm. It's the it, commissioners who decide. Right. And if they don't want to revoke it, that's it doesn't right. matter what we want to do. That's right. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, 
I, th I think that's really important to But the ban is not about. greater than 50 megawatts, not less than. Unless, right. Unless that's what you're saying about the other bill. I think your bigger problem down the road is going to be your 300 and under. And or 49.9 and under. Honestly, I didn't understand what you were saying about that. Are, are you saying that they're... Um, what, what were you saying about the 50 and under? Deal? 50 megawatts and over is industrial industrial solar that OPSB sites. And so After that, under that, OPSB has no, and that's right. why I said it's the Wild West, because there's really no regulation for small scale. But was somebody mentioning a bill coming up that may House Bill 450 is, they're just working on it. And you can and pull they it would up. They, they would take local control away from even a small scale. I don't know that. Okay. 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 It's still in committee, so it's not even worth reading yet, but it's worth watching. Um, just to follow up, the county, um, the county administrator let me know that um, if a township is to um, make a notice, um, to make a recommendation to them, um, let's see, then they have to... Um, mail a notice, I'm sorry, Mary Ann just left, they have to mail a notice to all municipal corporations within the township, which includes Yellow Springs. Um, they have to place it in a public library with a map for 40 days and do, do a public process basically before they would have a meeting, just so you know. There, there's another public process at the, at the county commission level. Um, I believe the Cedarville Commission, who did make a a recommendation that the entire Cedarville Township um, be restricted from solar. Their case will be heard at the commission. The commission will cover that on December 1st. So um, I didn't mean to say Cedarville County. I meant um, Cedarville Township. Um, wow. I am so glad that you all are in a room together because I feel like I'm... This may not be true. I feel like the only person in the room that's hearing more than one side. And um, I'm really glad that you got to hear each other today um, because it is very complex. Um, I don't know how I could possibly <laughs> make any kind of motion to make a recommendation based on what I see as the beginning of understanding huge issues. Um, I won't reiterate because it's just too complex. Um, I don't wish to make a motion tonight. For it. Yes? I have a question. The Township Zoning Commission is made up of the stakeholders in the township, uh, the farm owners. Uh, what is their position? Why aren't they here tonight? Well, first of all, it's not necessarily farm owners, it's people who live in the unincorporated area, which can be non-farmers, there are plenty of them. What is their position? I can't speak for them. That they come out in favor of n not having large utility zone. Or Kingwood. Kingwood, yeah. In specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, they have made that one. Yeah. Yes. Now they're not doing the, they're not doing the zoning Lamar because this is a unfortunate from the top down from the legislature of the state of Ohio which is directing what's going to happen and who's going to do it and that does not include the local zoning. I understand that, but property rights are my concern. In the future, after Kingwood is over with and done with. Uh, our property rights, uh, that's what I'm concerned with in the future, two or three years down the road. I can't disagree with that at all. Uh, just how many megawatts is this project? 175. Kingwood. 175. 175. It started at 175. Okay. 1,500 acres, right? I'm aware of the state bridge, it's just the other megawatt rate. Does, 
Does anyone know whether the county commissioners can be petitioned for something other than all one or the other? Can they be petitioned for a moratorium for two years? Or petitioned for, um, you know, uh, you know, something other than a flat out ban? I think that goes back to the question of how can they reverse their okay, well that, it's uh, similar to decision that. on, you know, putting, putting it up. It, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You can simply, they can simply recommend that this area is off limits. <coughs> that doesn't have to be the whole township. Yeah, either. like I, I, I know that the people who didn't get to speak, I didn't, was of the Little Miami um, watershed network. And they were particularly concerned about the farms along Clifton Road affecting mm -hmm. the, um, the Little Miami. So, for example, we could recommend that just as an example, that that's too delicate uh, an area. You know, so it doesn't, it's not all or nothing, that's what I'm trying to that's say. That's what I wanted to make clear. But I don't know time periods. I don't know. I guess we have to study Senate Bill 52. Well, we, we started out, or where we are now, is the potential, I mean, what we're considering, is potential of petitioning the county commissioners to uh, restrict solar from any any land zone agriculture in Miami Township in total wherever it is we did yes we did that's what the it's resolution that is that's been the one drafted. that Don yeah. wrote yesterday yeah. that's, that's that's what it now seen. we don't have to do it that way we can make it as you said the riparian strips along you know the little Miami only we it could be yeah. any it could be any amount but it doesn't have to be all and it, it's a real compelling um, argument for me. There seems like there's so much knowledge in this room. It's incredible. So much creativity, and it's a real compelling argument that um, I think the speaker said we need a plan, but first we need a block. I, I feel like that's what I learned tonight. Maybe to to find out what. I'm really impressed by the agreement in the room. There's nobody who I think is against solar. At least they didn't say anything. Um, but I, I am concerned about being community process being mowed down by um, large projects where some of you have spent the last four years of your life neglecting your families to, to fight a process that um, isn't listening to communities. So that I found that very compelling. So, given all these facts, I, I don't know how we get to a recommendation, but that's... Or yeah, can I ask a question? Go ahead. If, if a resolution does not come out of this meeting, does that tell the commissioners that we're free game, like we want... No, there's no timing thing? involved with this resolution. It could be today, it could be a year from today, it could be five years from today. There, there's, no, there's no time frame. But the commissioners wouldn't take that as any kind of a... I don't. I can't speak for them. I, I can't see where they'd see that we were free game, given the um, scads of testimony against King Kingwood. Some commissioners might think it's a knee-jerk reaction if they rushed into one tonight. I would, if I was a commissioner. And what would be a knee-jerk reaction? I would consider, if I was a commissioner, I would consider this to be a knee-jerk reaction if you had this first meeting. And then you come out with a resolution without putting a good, great deal of answering yeah. some of these questions that have been coming. The questions that don't have answers? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, get rid of them. Where are the promises? Yeah, I, I think those of you who have, those of you who have a lot of technical knowledge and a lot of knowledge on climate change data need to know what the people who are mm -hmm. been, who have been involved with the OSB in the process, you need to know their side and what the political reality of that is. And maybe maybe vice versa. I don't know. I I would like to suggest something. 
please. And that is that OPSB doesn't care what anyone thinks about anything. And the only reason that this project specifically was rejected was because it's renewable. They don't care about oil and gas. Yeah. I have seen people opposing oil and gas projects and felt this treated the same way. And the projects went through. Laura, they've only denied one solar project at the OPSB. One solar project has been denied. And it just happened like two weeks ago. My That's point the is about the oil and gas. This oh, SB 52, the only reason it's about your local rights is because it coincides with the first energy crowd. That's the only reason. They would not have passed it. Or it would have applied to more than just solar and wind. You have the roof of fracking. I'm sorry? You have the roof of That's your opinion. It is my opinion, and it's been based on watching them and watching their actions. Well, solar and wind, it takes 10,000 or 10 times the amount of space for solar and wind that it does compared to gas or coal. So you're talking about there's huge land grab here. So, I mean, it's... I don't have the numbers in front of me. I will just say I would just, if I did, I would dispute that assertion. But I don't, I don't, I didn't mean to, no. I didn't mean to derail it. I just wanted to say, OPSB is not in the business of listening to anyone. Nor is the developer. <clears throat> I'm not talking about the developer. I've heard lots of complaints about OPSB. Can I speak towards the, the, the technology aspect of this? I've been in the electronics community for a very long time, and to touch on what someone else said, we're allowing these outside sources to build this, build these components, and, and, and the, you know all this that goes into the solar. <coughs> now, shame on us for not being more proactive and, and building that in the states. We won't get into the economics of all that. Uh, however, China has no regulations on what what components they're using, lead free, lead. I guarantee you they're using the cheapest product possible, which will be lead and and, and those type contaminant <coughs> materials that I don't know about you, I don't want leaching into my water and my my lands. Um, I'm just throwing out there and Furthermore, we're punting um, this environmental situation to others with all these, these electrical cars and everyone keeps bringing us up. We pillage the earth to create these batteries for these cars. That, I'm not so sure that's, that's our, our way to go. There's technology out there. I think, unfortunately, the the right people aren't in the right ears in our in our government to push them but right now it seems to be settling into this these these giant uh, batteries on wheels which is is not environmentally friendly uh, to to produce and you know it like i said before we're i'm not against this stuff i i'm for doing it right and not just uh, jumping at this first ring and, and hoping that, that it's the, the proper one. Uh, that's sorry, I just I wanted to add that as far as the components and, and the materials that we're going to be this, I'm going to say polluted with, no pun intended, but that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. That's also opinion and I do have facts. For anybody who wants to contact me, I can send you facts that says that's wrong. And I'm going to stay that, quiet that, now because I'm getting upset. I do yourself. have facts for that, you're and I would be happy to share them. But no one, no one feels that in the states, and I guarantee you, China's not doing the right thing. I oh, promise said you that. Nichols worse, and it's uh, India. They said that they're polluting all the people in India. I'm going to move that the board uh, is melting. Uh, uh, adjourn for the evening. I would too. Can I second that? Okay, Harold will second it, and we'll be adjourned by Acting.